Hi, my friends, Sam Via here. I want to walk you through a really cool way to create a degree of shortness on top and how to create a more of a square shape on top by working with a diamond. This is part of our diamond series and make sure you catch some of that down below and go watch some of the other things that we've been giving to you in regards to diamonds. You're going to start to see a degree of shortness on top. Working with a diamond, you're distributing areas of weight and length in corners of the diamond. So we're going to number our diamond. Take a look at the sketch down below from a top view. You'll see the left front is number one, the right front is number two, the right back is number three, and the left back is number four. We're actually going to start with number two. Why, Sam? Because I'm right-handed, I'm going to encourage that you start on your most dominant side. Set up your success first, then go to your least dominant side. So how are we going to work this? We're going to take number two. Number two is going to come over to number one. Number one is going to move over to number two. Number three is going to move over to number four, and four will be moving over to number three. I know it sounds confusing, but let's watch. Go to number two. Okay, so I'm going to elevate number two. This is my triangle number two. Now look at the way that this is. What I want to do is create more degree of shortness up on the top and less degree of length as it collapses. And that's what's so cool about the diamond in terms of where you move this triangle. So I'm going to stand on the opposite side of the section that I'm cutting, in this case is number two. We're going to work with our blending shear. Here's the discovery. Rather than going in point cutting, discovered by working with a, blunt, with a blending shear, we're going to get a blunt action to it, but it's going to be very diffuse, almost like point cutting. It's going to happen rather quickly. Now we're going to bring this over to the opposite side in terms of what we're cutting. Now, I'm going to give you a back view of this so you can actually see how this is cut. Okay, so now look at number two over directly to number one. My line is going to be the opposite diagonal of the diamond on this side. So that's going to give me short to long. By doing that, watch how the cone releases. It comes back over and you're going to see it's going to collapse short to long moving and tilting the hair back away from the face. But I'm going to end up more square. So we're here. There's my line. Now, Sam, how do you know the degree of length? What I want you to be careful of is this. What's the degree of length you have underneath? That's going to be based upon the personality of the client. So we're going to go to just past the round of the head. We're going to cut a diagonal line. Look at the top view, and you'll see that's diagonal in relation to a circle. We're going to come back through now with our blending shear. I'm going to take the blunt blade, reverse it, and place it on the bottom. Why? So I get a more diffused edge up on the top. We're going to come through, diagonal, and we're going to move right, left. Look at the top view. I'm moving left, right, right, left, moving back and forth. So it ensures that we cut all the hair. It's a very minute, soft edge because of the blending shear. Now let's readjust, come back in, and notice I've about an inch inside of the desire of the length that I've cut. I'm going to go inside and just diffuse that just a little bit more. Now watch. As this line releases, let's give you a front view as it releases. Watch how that is going to release itself. That line is going to release from short to long, moving itself back. Let's continue now with number one. Remember, one, two, three, four. Just a circle. Started on my dominant side. Now I'm going to go to my weak side. Why? Now I have a guide. So I'm going to take a slice of what we just cut, and let's pick up this angle and look at it. And look how it's leading myself from short to long. That was that angle we cut. That's our guide. Now we're going to come through, take the entire diamond section at once. So here comes my diamond section. That's that triangle. All the way around, it's a diamond, four different triangles. We're going to take this particular triangle, number one, our guideline is a small slice of number two. Lifting this up, and now that's going to give us the angle underneath. So we're going to be underneath, comb, fine teeth of the comb, captures the hair. Angle comes in, and remember, I'm cutting this short in the front, long to the back. That's what I love about using a white comb. You can really see it from the top view, short to long. But where's my guide? There's my guide. Now we're going to come through. There's the edge. 
blending shear to create a very nice, soft, diffused edge. Sam, what? That's so minute in terms of the diffused edge. Why don't I just use a blunt shear and come in and re-soften? Remember, my friends, you're finding that it's just a millimeter of softness. That softness does make a difference as compared to a blunt action of a blunt shear. Reposition, your angle goes in deeper. Notice the angle that I'm cutting inside is the same angle that I cut. I'm not gonna square my shear just to create a texture or soft edge inside. I want that same line here, inside there. Encourages more movement moving back and away. Tilt my hand so that you can see, okay? And all I wanna do is just soften that edge just softly, and now release. Now we go to the back. I'm gonna give you a back view of that. Number three. Where's number three gonna to go to? It's going to come over to number four. So we're gonna come through, I'm gonna give you a three quarter view. Number three, one, two, three. Where does it go? Number four. So we take that. Is there a guide? We're going to take the extension of what we just cut on this line. That's gonna be extension of that. Now remember, this is going short to long towards that back. So we want to come through. We're going to take a section from the center that's going to act as that, but here's what I'm going to suggest I'm going to do. What I'm going to do, remember, the angle that I cut was the opposite angle of the diamond. Now watch what I'm going to do here. I want more degree of shortness there in the center. So rather than coming through and extending the line back, I'm going to turn my comb the opposite angle. So it's almost like a V. V for via. V for via. Now we come to the back here. Turn. Why are you doing this, Sam? Because I want more to go shortness back towards that crown. Now if the hair was really long, we could probably maintain this angle. So you get the extension of the length in proportion of the natural length they have. In this case, we're going to make that crown pop more. We go opposite direction. So it's almost like I'm cutting and duplicating the diamond within these sections. So it's a diamond that's basically cut on top. Once I'm moving left to right, you can see from a top view that we've got our diffused edge. Once we have that, we come back through and really diffuse this. So I just wanna diffuse that. Could I use the Invisiblend? You most certainly could use the Invisiblend if you want to. And now what you really get, you can see how diffused that is. We don't want a cap cut. But now watch the crown. The crown's gonna have a little bit more pop to it. Remember, it's your creativity in terms of this angle, what you wanna create. Now our last triangle. There's the diamond. Think the opposite angle. That's the angle we wanna cut. You should see that on my guide underneath. There it is there. We are there. Now we're gonna come through and we're going to cut that angle. And move left, right, left, right. By moving left, right, it ensures that you get all of the hair. Okay, once I get that off, remember, very soft diffused edge. We readjust our hand. We're going deeper inside. I'm really just putting my hand in this position so that you can see. And just soften. And release. Now watch this silhouette that we're able to create and the movement that we're able to create within the shape. You can just start to see the silhouette alter. Most importantly, once again, this will move back and away in a profile view. And you can still leave length or no angle into the front area. This is moving back. Now watch the back of this, and you can see why I changed my angle. It's giving me just everything moving right into that center rather than getting a corner that does this. Once again, some hot tips for you behind the chair in terms of creating degrees of shortness in your top and crown areas. Thanks for watching.